Hello, everybody, and welcome back to part four of re of the Fable of Zero Kita. I am your host, Kiara Gotaku, along with my friend, Shiki Scarlet. Hello again. We're here to suffer for your viewing pleasure. Yes, I want to point out that this is actually the second time we're recording, because the last time I was stuttering like a goddamn madman. So hopefully we won't have that problem. Oh boy. So, are we going to start this bad boy? Well, might as well get this over with. The sooner the better. Anyways. <clears throat> Chapter 10. Winter's Cold Embrace. Ellipses. 1940 AD. The Outsider World. Yukari had come to the Outside World to meet an old friend of hers that she had not seen in a long time, and he was an artist, and once she hoped would go on to do good things, she gapped into the house, and it was dark. <laughs> This is it. Totally not tasteless at all. Ain't all for you there. Yukari called, and then she could hear laughing in the other end of the room as a man covered in shadows sat at his desk, a flag behind him. <laughs> he was probably thinking of a really funny joke. <laughs> it's been so long, Batman. I was starting to think it was just a figment of my imagination back then. <laughs> Adolf laughed. Adolf, what is going on? Everything in your country is different now. All these war machines and a man on the street. Perhaps it is the Chan Gog of the time. Yukari said, yet she could sense a darkness. Hitler beckoned her over. Do you want some bacon? I don't know, I just said that as bacon her over. Bacon. Brilliant. Said, here's play our chess games like we did back in the days. Adolf Hitler said as he pointed to a chess set on his desk and Yukari sat down. I, I, I don't know why I'm voicing uh, Hitler like the Keith, Heath Ledger Joker. <laughs> but I'm just going to roll with it. Just roll. What happened to you? You are such a nice boy back in those days. Yeah, you such a nice boy. Yukari <laughs> sighed. Hitler smiled. I saw horror and war, you carry. It changed me. <laughs> and I saw those people you call dot 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 humans. They have to be controlled. Dot 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 cold. Dot dot dot, dot, dot. Captain Lion. You are crazy. I love you. Hitler said as she get as she oh as yeah moved a chess piece. <laughs> What have you become? Y Yukari asked, and Hitler looked at her and grinned with a psycho smile. I learned something. That a less race, they had to be kept in line. That there's humans need a reason to hate. So I gave them one. I gave them a target. It was the only way to stop them killing t easy me selves in their rage and hate for all living things. Now, also, Yukari, you want to know how I got this mustache? <laughs> he continued. Yukari wanted to cry inside. Of all the years, she made visitees to the outside world to ponder her cursed city and have fun as she was a yokai of whimsy and joy and Hitler was her most recent friend. So what drove him to this? What turned her loving friend into this monster that sat before her? Could it be that humanity always had this evil within to them, she thought. No, it was because all it takes to reduce the sanest man to lunacy is one bad day. That's what happened to me, Batman. One never, bad we, day. Never, 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 I think I want to make an everyone loses their minds joke, but I can't think of a good one. <laughs> Please stop this. You're a good man. Please turn back from this dark path. Yukardi Yuka begged. Hitler grabbed her arm and ripped at her dress. Here it comes. If anyone tunes out in a effie scene, I won't blame you. It's like, because I think this implied like rape here, and that's. That's fucking gross, man. That's just not right. Gross. I will make you see as I do. Let me show you the darkness of humanity. He laughed. Back in the present day, Yukari woke up, her bed sheets covered in sweat. Uh, so, uh, I mean, I, I don't want to assume, but does this scene apply that Adolf Hitler assaulted Yukari in a, a way that is... Uh, I don't even want to say the word. I want to keep this thing PJ, but like, uh, I, I, just, I, I don't even know what to say. That's just, I am, that's uh, just bad. I, honestly, I have no idea what happened in that scene either. I still ponder. I, I don't thing. want to think about it too much. So yeah, 
bad dreams again, mistress? And Ron, Ron said, and Yukari nodded. It's time to make our final move. It's time for mankind to fall. At last we will destroy the Jedi. Yukari ordered. And now, now then, Ron, execute Order 66. Else, uh, else, uh, else uh, uh, Zero was me uh, meditating, then Tenchi appeared. Just like, boop, instant transmission. All you ever do is train, Vegeta. You've been doing that for the past four months. I'm bored. Let's play. Tenshi begged, and Zero smiled and ruffled her hair. All right, Tenshi. Zero responded and got on his feet. They went to a heavenly swing park together and sat on the swings, talking. Oh, well, it's good to get swing parks in heaven. That's an important thing. Yeah, 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 never, yeah, never mind, like, all the clouds and heavenly buildings. Nah, I mean, you gotta get them swing parks. That's when you know you're in heaven. I just want somebody to take the uh, swing park sketch from Limmy's show, but with Tenshi, and just put the dub in there. That would be golden. <laughs> Everyone here is such a prude, but not you, Zero. I feel like we can act. Uh, Tenshi smiled, and Zero nodded. Thank you. You've been too kind to me, and I am thankful for that. Yet I am burdened with my guilt for the things I he was forced to do when you carry corrupted me. Zero sighed. It's not your fault, Zero. Please forgive yourself. Tenchi smiled as she kissed Zero, Zero on the cheek. And I, I think you mean faulty, not fault. You're now picturing Nappa kissing Zero Kita. Perfect. Enjoy. <laughs> Let's go out for ice cream. Tenchi said, and they left to get ice cream together. That was clearly important. A month later, Zero was training with Flown to, to get in touch with his light side. Oh, oh I've got a perfect voice for Flown. Now uh, you you must learn to uh, focus on the holy energies, and uh, yeah, you can uh, channel it forward. Uh, whatever you say, Kermit the Frog, Flone said, and Zero focused as he was able to unleash a beam of pure light energy. Uh, keep going, uh, and uh, focus on uh, the power increase. Uh, Flone said while Tenchi and some archangels watched. Then Zero exploded into pure light as he formed runic angelic style wings and his hair turned a glowing white along with silver and golden armor. You can just form armor at thin air now. Yep, just form armor. I mean, I mean can't you? I feel the power! Zero said. Yep, yep. You uh, finally uh, discovered your Chaos Angel form. Flon said. Uh, with uh, this, you uh, might stand a chance against what's to come. F. Flon said. To celebrate, they went. All, they all went out for food and drinks, and Zero went on a date with Tenshu, who he was really getting to know more and more with the passing days. At the bar, they shared some wine. Yes, because uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I, I'm not, I'm, I forget, uh, I take it that angels in Toho, they can't actually drink wine, can they, or are they allowed to? I know monks can't drink wine. I don't know, all I know is I got swing parks and I think karaoke bars in heaven here. Yeah, maybe, and it, and it also has a, and it also has a map to Luke Skywalker, this sucker has everything! <laughs> Zero. I have feelings for you. Tenshi sighed and Zero sm smilglid. I do as well, but I feel I'd... And before he could finish, Tenshi drew Zero into a passionate kiss and they made out. Zero, would you bed me tonight? Oh yeah, that's how you get, the, that's how you get your significant other is just, Yo, hey girl, what's up? You wanna bed me tonight? <laughs> Oh, Zero needs the coochie, so he's like, hell yeah! Tenchi asked, and Zero only offered a nod because he was lost for words. Zero and Tenchi went home and gave themselves to each other that night as their passions could be felt far into the night and the sunrise. I'm getting the coochie tonight. I won't be an incel any longer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, attention. Tenchi. Tenchi, I've known you a few months, yet I feel a deep love building. Dot, dot, dot. In a few years, I will return to the moral world and begin my <laughs> final battle. Dot, dot, dot. Before that, I would like you to be my wife. Zero asked, and Tenshi blushed. 
Vegeta, it would be an honor. Tenshi cried and cuddled him. After a month, they had a large wedding ceremony in a white castle, and Flone acted as their priestess. You know, you can't just, like, literally setting up a dictatorship. They're just like, ah, we'll just spend a few years just chilling in heaven and just not caring. The only the only White Castle I can think of, actually, is just the one. It's actually the fast food place. And, oh, my goodness. Their burgers oh. really taste awful. <laughs> that just shows that Zero's just classy when he gets married. Just, uh, we're going to White Castle. <laughs> or, do you, uh... Take uh, zero uh, attention as uh, your wife to uh, your love for eternity? Flown asked. I do, said Zero. And uh, do you tend to take uh, Zero to be your husband? Uh, asked Flown. Yes, replied Tenshi. Then uh, I proclaim you man and wife. You may kiss the bridge. Then said Flown, and Zero and Tenshi kissed the bridge. <laughs> That I want that I want that on a t-shirt. You may kiss the bridge. Yes. <laughs> if we merchandise, we have to do it up. Tenchi was wearing an elegant blue wedding dress and Zero a black and gold suit with the cape. It's, it's, honestly, man, that's just no. They went to a feast with all with all their friends and had a celebration far into the night with mead and the finest meats in Veg. Finally, three years had passed as Zero completed his training, having mastered all the schools of magic, unlocking his chaos angel form, and learning how to use all forms of weaponry at, to near perfection. He was ready, able to, willing to fight. He's unlocked his Marty Stu abilities, finally. Perfect. <laughs> I will miss you all. Zero said as he stood at the way portal. Uh, oh yes, one. Uh, you've done uh, well, but uh, Zero, beware. Much has uh, changed since you left. It may not uh, be the Gensokyo you remember. Uh, be aware, and Flown. don't smoke. Flown warned. It, it was then Tenshi appeared, just instant transmission again. Zero, I wish to go with you and aid you in the coming war. Tenshi begged. No, Tenshi. It's dangerous down there, and I can't risk you. You, you do realize what Tenshi is capable of, right? You, I, I think she can handle it just fine. Yeah, right. she's like a what was WMD, essentially. Yeah, what um, no, Zero said. Uh, he is, uh, right, and if you go there, you'll, uh, lose your celestial powers and become mortal. First off, celestial. Second of all, I don't think that's what happens every single time Tenshi goes down to the mortal realm. I think it's, it's just like, hey, hey, I'm here, I can do what I want. She's basically a jail, like, I can do anything. Chaos, chaos. <laughs> chaos, chaos, the flum said. I don't care as long as I can be with my Zero. Tenchi said. I guess I can't stop you. Sighed Zero. The two, the two departed through the way portal as they fell through a waterfall of light and magic before appearing in a ruined forest of some kind. Zero was back against Sokyo, and it was not against Sokyo he would remember. I want to keep in mind, everyone. This is only this is only Winter's Cold Embrace. We still have plenty of chapters to go. Um, oh boy. All right. Then. Let's see. Next up, chapter 12 Winter's Darkness Falls. That just doesn't sound right grammatically. Zero and Tenchi walked the ruined forest and it was dark. Okay, so you kind of wanted to take over to stop human influence, but she's just destroyed nature. Which, yeah. Okay. <laughs> what happened here? Let's see. Tenshui asked with puzzled and, and Zero sigh. I think tissue said to be to foretast the magic. Foretast. He sighed and, and not say some mushroom on the ground. It, oh no, he's in a League of Legends match. Run! It was, it was, it, yeah, he, Timo was on the lookout. You better hide. It was then a group of armored ferrets with steampunk shotguns. Uh, come Oh no, it's one of the skins. <laughs> oh god. Well, what do we have here? Looks like a goddamn stinking human piece of shit. Zero, uh, Zero spat at them. Humans are not meant to be outside the human camp, growled Rumia. Rumia was chewing some gum and spitting everywhere, which made Zero feel, uh, feel disgusted. <laughs> okay, so Yukari assassinates the mayor. 
it's obviously not a murder, despite making the mayor eat broken glass. Then assassinates the guardian of the human village. Everyone's just dirt. They don't understand what's going on. And then she puts one of her own in leadership, promising a new age of human yoke corporation. And they're like, yeah, we're just going to kill you on Bill Campus. Everyone's like, yeah, okay. Because couldn't have done this overnight. This had to be like a long-term project to get from A to B. Yeah. And every, all the humans were just okay with it. Yeah, they seem totally submissive and very, very dumb. Oh, we would get back to the Obama chapter when you talk about this. Da, 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 don't tell me. Okay, okay, not okay, yet, okay. Not yet. Ah, oh, God. I remember you, you human hating scumbag. Uh, Zero grinned with a psycho smile as he cracked his knuckles. Cyrano laughed. We'll be in human and I, girls. Uh, uh, she lagutered and then charged forward, but Zero uh, Isle blocked her and kicked her into a tree. Fucking try it, you bitch. He said, and, he said, and charged up a holy ball and slammed it into Rumia's face, knocking her teeth out and leaving her bloody. I fought as much, weakling. Zero said as he charged forward and punched her over and over until nothing but a bloody mess was left. I am all of me. I <laughs> That's am it. Just I the edge. <laughs> You treat humans like animals, then you will die like animals. Zero said and formed a holy energy blade from his arm. Eat this. He shouted and cut Rumia in half, ending her life once and for all. Fucking hell. Uh, our hero. <laughs> uh, okay, I just want to point out our hero, everybody. When he's not mur <clears throat> when he's not killing off all these uh, all these adorable fairy girls, he's drowning puppies in acid. <laughs> Uh, this is for every human that died by your hands, yokai. Zero spat. Cyrano tried to run, or what, why can't she just fly? And ten, she laughed as she fired a barrage of colorful magic at them. Don't even try it, Baka. Ten, she giggled and blasted the fairies, killing them. Zero cornered Cyrano uh, and kicked her face at first into the ground as she coughed up blood. Please have pity on me. Cyrano cried. I do have pity. But you need to pay for your crimes. Zero said as he kicked her upwards and teleported behind her, joining his fists as he slammed her in her in the back, back into the ground, breaking her bones. Zero landed and pressed his boot into her back. This is like Frank Miller's holy terror. <laughs> the scene of that where they just torture and cripple an unarmed prisoner <laughs> and talk about how they're sadistically enjoying it. Oh, God. And there may be the heroes. <laughs> okay, Zero... You showed them, dear. Let's see. I think you um. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 I'm a, you you skipped a bit. Uh, I oh yeah. I'm gonna force you to live like humans do. Zero said angrily as he grabbed her ice wings tightly and then, with an enhanced power, ripped them out uh, out of her back as bloody spray everywhere. And Cyrano was screaming in agony. Deal with it, Zero Some said classes. as he walked off, let, uh, letoving her, rolling, her to rolling around, a thick round in pain, screaming. Zero, oh. Zero then gave Tenchi Fi, and then they did a bad uh, husband and wife back-to-back -back pose. You show them, dear. Tenchi smiled and hugged him. Z Zero picked up one of the shotguns and strapped it to his back. Wouldn't it be a fairy size shotgun? So he's probably got like a tiny little toy shotgun in his hands. You know, yeah, yeah, just like a tiny little, just tiny little shotgun, just pew pew. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's my head cannon now. Right, yeah, we're, oh yeah. We need to find a human village. See what has changed these past few years. He sighed and then, and they ventured forward. As they got there, they noted a sign and it said Yukari City and it was more industrial but with nature and some steampunk things and it was full of yokai. This is like Mother 3 with <laughs> steampunk. Just say Mother 3 with <laughs> steampunk but bad. They saw, they saw a fast food stand with a fairy at the front. Oh, human burgers, get your human burgers for a taste day. She smiled. Zero wanted to kill the burger, but held himself back because of Tenchi. We can't draw attention to ourselves. We have to blend in. Tenchi said, and Zero nodded. There was also a yokai pressed on a stand, chanting to a crowd. 
Humans are scum! Humans are filth! We will bring misery in the world, but our God, you carry had mercy and gave her pupillas in a new world! She said, oh uh, look, uh, uh, now every single time we get to this line, I'm always imagining just Monty Python, just... I... Oh, okay. <laughs> You carry so full of mercy that she's literally turning humans into hamburger meat and putting them in labor camps. Uh, oh, yeah, what a mercy. Oh, God. Imagine imagine the humans just eating the human burgers. Just like, oh, man. Oh, man. I didn't know we were so delicious. I'm going to become a cannibal. <laughs> then then two police yokai in, a, in brass armor with guns came down. Halt, citizen. Where are your ID cards? Asked the officers. Uh, we forgot it. Zero said, trying to get away from di him, but they armed her weapons. They got ready to kill. Humans should be in the cap. You will be exterminated now. Shouted the Yokari police armor, and then a uh, a uh, Jeff Goldblum, a uh, strange shadowy figure in a in a clock appear and cut them down with a sword. Over here, she shouted and, and led them sa safety into a, into an alleyway and a secret door behind a house. Inside the safe house, the girl took the cloak off, and it was and it was Sine and Zero smiled as he hugged her. I'm sorry for what my corrupted sight did you years ago, he said, and hugged her and noted she had a metal plate augmentation thing around her stomach. I didn't ask for this. <laughs> I didn't ask for this. It was a fatal wound, but Kaneko was able to use magic to keep me alive until they could augment it in me and give me new artificial organs. <gasps> she said, okay, so first off, found. Second of all, ar artificial, okay? I just wanted to say, uh, Sine poured everyone, and, and poured everyone tea and Kaneko came in. After you died, Zero, Yukari had her agents in key positions to take control. And at first, they said it was for human interest. And people believed them as they passed new laws and acts to take away more and more power. Until the yokai held all of the keys and all of the doors. That's when Yukari began her coup to... With the help of the combined moon and yokai armies, Sinar said. Then Kanako spoke. They declare Marsh Tail Law and take power, and then after a while, the humans became second-class citizens over time. They were sent to work camps to build weapons and items for the yokai elite. But not just that, Yokari is building a, a Magitech army to invade the outside world and turn it into a region of the new Gensokyo. If we let her win, she will enslave all the humans forever. Kanako said, aside, Zero sip his tea and ponder. If they do that, then magic would return to the outside. It would be chaos, and the yokai would be rulers of all. Then we must stop them, Tenchi said. Kanako came in and opened the box. She came in again, I suppose. Did you even say that she left? She just, like, came in? What, did she, what, did she just, like, transmission, instant transmission, in and out? It's uh, obviously our evil twin trying to kill her and replace her. Uh, of course, most classic maneuver! I engineered these for you. The metals are made of pure runestone. She said, and inside the box were two large handguns named Dragon Soul and Dark Edge, and they had gold plating and runic engravings on them. Dynamite. Zero smiled as he posed with the guns and could feel his magic resonate with them. Got you up those edgy points, so now he's Dante from the Devil May Cry series. Come on, man, that's like an insult to Dante. Yeah, good point. We sent a message to Yukari. Tonight we free the camp. And he smiled. Later that night at Yukari City Gulag, the humans were slaving away, mining and building and being whipped and tortured by Yukari guards. The warden, Misty Loli Riri, was overseeing the camp. Work harder, you fuckers! Work longer, better, faster! She spat and kicked a child. Fucking humans! She laughed and godded some of her guards to kick the boy while he was down. Oh, I, I, I've got a better voice for her now. Oh, oh you're going to love this. Oh, no. You know, where am I? Uh... <laughs> oh, if you can't work, then I'll make you a good snack. <laughs> she laughed, and then t he doors blew up. Zero walked in, dragging the body of a dead guard behind him. I'm just picturing the uh, Iron Man song when he's doing that. Just... Oh, fuck. 
I'm gonna pay you yokai fucks back for Kine and the others who died because of you. The case, um, Zero smirked as he pulled out the handguns out and started blasting the guards one by one as the bodies piled up. Oh, kill that fucker! Loli, uh, Loliri screamed as more heavy armored guards came into the room and Zero spun around shooting at them. Burning blast! He shouted and channeled the fire magic into the guns, blowing up a row of guards. The humans cheered as Zero took out the shotgun and blasted a magician yokai in the face, killing her. Boom, baby. He laughed. Okay, I just I like to assume that this little mining area is like it's just like a narrow hallway. So as he's doing all of this, uh, every all the it's like there's a lot more humans dying. It's just oh great, <laughs> Zero, you fool! Look what you have done. <laughs> That's our hero, everyone. Uh, fairy guards came in. Kill him! Shouted the head fairy and with green hair and they charged and attacked Zero, but he drew his blade and blocked their attacks as he cut each one day, leaving a pile of bo uh, bloody bodies and injured fairies screaming in pain from their wounds. Zero freed the humans. Stacy was just an ordinary fairy guard who was struggling to pay her family. When she heard about a job that would pay the bill, she quickly took it. And now her family will have to bury her because of Zero Kata. Oh. <laughs> These minions clock it from 9 to 5. <laughs> Get out now! Go to Safisi! You're a free man now! And the crowd cheered. Zero! 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 This day chanted. After finishing the last guard off, he moved towards Loli uh, Ree. I'm going to pay you back for Kini, for Billy, and all the others that suffered. Zero shouted as he charged, and then Loli uh, re-kissed a flood of magic as Zero mana vuered and dodged every blast, and then started to slash at her over and over, wounding her. Ha <laughs> ha! Fuck you! Ha <laughs> ha! screamed. Go to hell! Zero spat and punched her in the face, breaking her nose. Loli Ri tried to cast defense magic, but she was low on energy as Zero teleported in front of her, grabbing Nothing her by the personnel, neck. Nothing personnel, kid. <laughs> he grabbed, grabbing her by the neck and then punching her face over and over and over. You damn yokai oppressed everyone! You made humans suffer! He cried as he punched her again and again until she was dead and nothing was left of her. Zero, stop it now! It's over, and I'm worried about you. Tenchi begged as he let go of the limp body. He hurt so many people. He sobbed. <laughs> Come on, can let's get out of F here before Yukari gets her army to reinforce it. Tenchu said, and they escaped back to the safe house. It was late at night, and Kanko had prepared a room for Zero and Tenchi as they rested in bed, wondering about what would happen. Yukari is not going to be happy about this. She will want revenge. Zero sighed. Ten Tenshui cuddled him. Mm, it's not the Gensokyo I remember. This was a Kiirin and happy land, but Yukari has twisted and perverted it. She sighed. Zero lay back in bed, knowing the true fight was coming. I miss the old Gensokyo, the one that took me in three years ago. I miss trading with Pa... Dot, dot, dot. Well, and the Scarlet Devil Mansion. My adventures with Marissia and the others. I want that bitch to pay for Ru Ianing this wonderful world. He, he said with sadness. Tenchi kissed him. Let's make the most of this night. She smiled and they made out and Zero gave himself to his lover and wife that night, knowing it may be the last chance to be happy before the battles to come. Why can't I just say sex? Why is it always, and they gave themselves to each other that night? Yes. Why is it always that? Just like, just say it, okay? Just say it. You're on fanfiction.net. Just say it already. Jeez. All right. Uh. Next up. Chapter 13, Winter's Void. Pa Pacho Louie was in the Scarlet Devil Mansion and that was now covered in the flags of Yukari's empire as she watched her two-year-old son, Kazuki Knowledge, playing... Enough. The boy must go to his dark studies. Ordered Rayson, who is in a Nazi-style outfit now, and she took the boy away. He must learn the ways of yokai supremacy. Don't mean supremacy, Raisin saluted. Patch, uh, Patch Louie fell to the ground and started to cry. I'm sorry it happened this way, Zero. She, she cried. I just want to have fun and play. Kazuki said, but Rayson punched him and knocked him out. 
Shut up, you bastard. Yeah, okay, well, now how is he going to learn his dark studies if he's knocked out? Racing, you didn't think that part through, did you? She said and carried the boy over her sh her soldier, and it made a Pachui cry even more. <laughs> Pachui, Gazuntai. At the, at the Yokai town, the shock troops had gathered up humans that dared to rebel as Officer Ikishiki Yamahama came in with a black trench coat. <laughs> Ikishiki Yamahama. <laughs> okay, I don't think that she would... <laughs> Side with a fascist regime. She'd probably like harshly like condemn all the UK hell for like fucking up against Tokyo for like selfish ends. Yes. Tell them, you're sinners! You're sinners! All oh, of you! None of you are free of sin! You! You go to hell! You go to hell! You go to hell! Everyone goes to hell! Meanwhile, Kamachi is just like, oh my god, why is there so much work? So you dare to break your carry law, eh? Then you must be exterminated. She said and took out a steampunk flamethrower and burned them all to death as they creamed and begged for mercy, but then died. Oh, I love being burned to death. Oh, oh, no, come on, man. That is a different kind of creamed, okay? <laughs> Disgusting humans, you had it coming for having evil in you. She hopped. Back at the back at the hideout, Zero woke up after a night of passionate sex with his wife Tenchi. Oh, oh, he done it, he done it, he grew a pair and just said sex. Oh, that was... That was a good night, honey. Tenchi smiled and kissed him on the cheek as she got up to make some breakfast for the gang and green tea. Again, like, all of this little slice of life stuff is going on. You get a pretty sure, like, everyone else is all being burnt to her cards. They're like, oh, God, someone help us out! <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, I wish this would have an animated adaptation. Oh, like, Don't give him any ideas. You know, you know, like, Rimu fights the bad guys in the dark or something. I would just, I would kill for that one day. Oh, well, I can dream. We should target Ran. That way we can draw Yukari, Yamako out, and enter evil. Zero said as they had a meeting around the table. We know Yukari plans to invade the outside world and turn it into more against Silkyo, to break the laws of the universe and have magic take over everything into a perfect fantasy world. Kanako said. That could be fun. The outside world was always boring. Zero laughed. Zero, uh, honey, you, you do realize the outside world is your world, right? The, you know, Earth. You're you're a you're a freaking madman. That's what you are. Kind of go pour more tea. I know the way to Rand's base. I can lead us there. Kanako said, and they got ready. And Zero checked his guns out and got his sword. Let's rock. The sooner we end this shit. The better. Zero said. They hid inside a transport as they went to the base and noticed guards in black armor with red eyes. Halt, who goes there? Said the guards and then Zero jumped out with his blade and cut them in half. Fuck you! Zero shouted and they busted in. How dare you murder my brother? You will pay for murdering him in cold blood! <laughs> That's the only thing I can think which is the black armor red eyes. Just there's no end to that brother! Zero ran in and started shoot, shooting everyone as the guards hit the floor one by one. Then he did a somersault and landed behind a squad as he executed them with high-powered rounds. And he saw some dark fairies and fired lightning at them as they fried. They, goodness. <laughs> He's killing us one by one, brother! They busted into the main chamber and Ron Yakumo was sitting on the throne laughing and wearing a black dress. Finally, after years of bit like Yukari, I've gone up in the world. I knew it was worth it. <laughs> so you came. It was a pity you did not decide to continue working with us, Zero Kaita. You could have been a made man. Okay, so first off, Katoon ran spat. <laughs> Katoon. Katoon. I would rather die than work with a bunch of fucking Nazi wannabes, though I will do that in a few years. But that's another story, like the yokai. Zero said, and Ron giggled. That can be arranged. Ron, Ron snapped her fingers, and Zero could feel a painful surge as Kanago stabbed him in the back with a cattle prod. <laughs> Feels good, man. <laughs> Nail, motherfucker. Screamed Ron with delight. Kanako, why you betray me? Why? Why? Asked Zero, and Kanako looked away in shame. A perfect world of fantasy. A universe where magic is strong again. I could have as much faith as I ever want. 
I'm sorry, but I must do this. Then a steampunk helicopter could be heard as it landed on the roof, and Ron's uh, Elt, uh, Elt soldiers dragged Zero to the roof and forced him to his knees before Yukari. This is very kinky. <laughs> I'm, su I'm surprised you came back from the bed, love. Yukari said and kissed him sadistically. How do you Wait, kiss? Like, okay, I just want. How do you kiss someone sadistically? That 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 is like a question that I I need answered, but I know I won't be happy with I the answer. I'm, I'm just picturing like Regio from Kill the Kill. You know, she had some creepy, touchy oh. vibes going on there. <laughs> hey, she, she just call she calls it family yeah. bonding. Can we just picture like Regio's theme tune like plays every time you carries like in a scene here? Just do 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 do. Uh, yes. <laughs> Fuck you! Zero said, remembering the darkness she once infected him with and the evil he was forced to do in Yukari's name two years ago. Yukari kicked him to the floor. I will train you to be obedient again, no matter what. Now lick my boots clean, maggot. Yukari ordered and grabbed Zero by the hair. Zero got angry and powered up as he tried to uppercut her, but Yukari dodged with, uh, with easily and fired thousands of magic energy balls at him as he tried to dodge but took a few hits. I see you've learned late, magic, but it will not save you, dear. Yukari laughed and fired more spells. Zero Kita draw his blade and cut the spells apart as he uses Zandasu to run for a while. of nature! While, def uh, while defecting magical attacks. Oh my. Yukari giggled. Zero then drew his handguns and fired hundreds of shots at Yukari, but she made them freeze in midair and turned them to dust. You bore me with this. She laughed. Yukari punched Zero in the stomach as he throwed up, but then she kicked him in the head before blasting him with a powerful spell card with the rainbow fire as he was wounded and badly hurt. The rainbow fire. Ikishiki Yamahama, and now this. I love how she just lets so her, like, kill the fucker right now and secure your, like, just... empire? Yeah. Does that love yeah, yeah, just, just, just kill him, please. You can just end it all right then because, and there. Like, end of story. Like, almost defeating a Marty Stu and then letting him live will allow him to gain more of a power-up later that will use to destroy you in the final act. It's like Tropes 101. You know, I also find it funny that despite the fact that Zero is supposedly got even stronger, he still, he still can't even lay a finger to Yukari. You're not strong enough to even be my pet. Be gone! She sighed and then blasted him off the building as he fell below into the darkness. Yukari turned her back and looked to her servants. The victory will begin soon. We can sing for the end of days. She said and the servants saluted her. Oh my goodness. Okay, we're we're almost done for this part, so we're just gonna we're gonna end it off with this chapter. Chapter thirteen, the end of uh, uh, chapter thirteen. The end of seasons. Earth, the outsider world. A glowing red light was seen in the night sky as the barrier between Gensokyo and the outside world had become weak. The light was all over the news and people across the earth started to panic, some even having a riot. That fast? Oh, uh, oh wait, here we go, guys. <clears throat> Obama went into an emergency meeting at the White House with top military men to discuss the crisis and deal with it as quick as possible. Okay, uh... We have to deal with this. It is uh, very bad. It could destabilize the world. Uh, Obama said, and the army men nodded. Just pet your classic army men. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 just the toy soldiers from Toy Story. It's genius. Uh, we believe it's magic and origin, sir, said the military commander. Magic? Obama escadined the armor. Not the army nodded. The army guided the files and put them on the table. Uh, we fought and magic left the world. The last incident was Judgment Night in the 80s. The army commander said. I'm pretty sure at that point, Barack Obama will be looking at his toy soldiers like, You're, uh, freaking crazy. Why am I even having this meeting in the first place? <laughs> then a gap opened in the briefing room and Yukari came out wearing her finest black dress. Because everyone's got to look cool in black dresses. Am I right? Yep. Good day, gentlemen. From this day on, you serve Gensukio as slaves to the yokai. You mean gentleman, Yukari said and laughed as two of her enforcers, <laughs> Ron and Chen, came out of the gap. That's right. Don't, don't, don't you dare do this to me. Don't you dare do this to me, Zara. You are, a, she is not Meowth and you know it, Chen said. <laughs> the army guys took out pistols and tried to shoot the yoak, but the bullets bounced off them. 
<laughs> Stupid humans. Your weapons are useless. Now kneel. Ron said as she cast a powerful Damaku spell and set all the army guys on fire as they died screaming. I am on fire. <laughs> oh. I'm sorry, I can't get out of my head. Just chant saying, that's right, please. Why you gotta do this to me, guys? Stop that's me. right. Yeah, wow, ah, fat. Obama tried to stay calm and collected. Now, uh, just what is it that you want? You carry, wasn't it? Uh, Obama asked. You will let the world hear me speak, and then you'll tell the humans their place. Yukari demanded, and Obama nodded. All right, um, I'm clearly going to die if I don't obey her orders, so why not? Obama got the news to do a public White House broadcast to the world as he stood in front of the camera's press and crowds. My uh, fellow Americans and humans of the Earth, we have been contacted by a new race called the Okai. Uh, they can use magic, and we hope to foster peace with them. And they will open up talks because it's American way. And I give you, uh, you carry Yakimo, <laughs> the Yukari, UK uh, leader. Yeah, Obama said, and let Yukari take the stand. You serve the UK, you know, pigs. Humans are vicious monsters that start wars and destroy the planet. And you must pay for that. You have evil written into your DNA as you have been... Uh, I've lost track of it. Hold on. Yes, as you call it human nature. You cannot control your human nature. You are like vicious animals consumed by your own greed and evil. But we take pity on you. And when there are you, we will tame and mold you into something better at our feet. Oh, yeah, like the yokai are any better, am I right? I love that. This is just her sales pitch of world. I'm going to enslave you and treat you like shit, so I surrender to yeah. me. Yeah, again, I, and, and again, again, I just want to point out that she calls the humans racist monsters and they start wars and destroy the planet. And I'm just like, again, like the yokai are any better, am I right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, as if they're any better. Then Yukari, uh, only Yukari said to the crowd and Obama nodded. Then Yukari drew a patri uh, Patriot machine gun and fired the entire clip into Obama as bullet after bullet cut through his body, making him uh, have more holes than Swiss cheese. <laughs> Sorry, try to reenact Metal Gear there. <laughs> this is what happens to those that refuse to accept the new order. Yukari giggled as she dug her heel into the remains of Barack Obama. Okay, so, um, uh, he did not, um, you know, um, he did not refuse. He did exactly <laughs> as you told her. Uh, he did exactly as you told him to do. And he still gets punished at the end. Why do you do this, Yukari? You fool. Yukari laughed. <laughs> Rejoice, humans, for a glorious age is here, and the turn of magic in the reformation of the human race. She said as she cast a spell, making the crowd cheer, and they threw a parody for Yukari, like <laughs> like the one out of Final Fantasy VIII. Ah, yes, I remember having a parody in Final Fantasy VIII. I actually never played that game. I should probably do that at some point. I think it means a sorceress parade scene, <laughs> and he's just misspelled with it. Look, look, as long as it involves black mages, I'm good. England, Earth, outside world. David Cameron watched the broadcast, and it was not amused. Um, oh, God, that's the David Cameron's voice. Oh, boy. We, um, uh, uh... Hello, chaps. We must call a meeting. Okay. We must stop them, Guasse. Uh, call a meeting of Cobra. <laughs> The Prime Minister ordered as they met in Downing Street around the meeting table. I've, uh, I'd say I've ordered a deployed unit and I'm uh, working on the situation to try and stop these magical yokai people. David Camerson said, unit came in wearing red army capes and black military gear. This is a reference to Doctor Who because, like, unit are a faction. So he's, like, doing a, like, a bunch of random crossovers for no reason here. This is just getting crazy. Yeah, basically, think of, like, the SCP. They're kind of like that type of group. Oh, like, it's the only Cobra I can think of that's in all caps. It's just the one from G.I. Joe. That's why I went COBRA! <laughs> that's actually the real uh, UK emergency. Like, can I, they're literally, like, I don't know why, but they did call it Cobra. Mm -hmm. uh, we, uh... Oh, God. Uh, I said, we brought the best detective in the country to help after this is our greatest asset as recommended by my Croft. The unit officer said, and then, <clears throat> I'm reading the fig here, Sherlock Holmes came into the room wearing his grey trench coat and scarf. 
Prime Minister, I have looked into my mind, Palace, and the situation is worse than you think. Sherlock said. Do tell us. David Cameron asked. Sherlock nodded. Yokai are Japanese demons from old folklore. It is very bad, Prime Minister. If they return to this world and take over, humanity will not just be second class. We would become cattle to them as they eat humans. They want us to become a slave race they can cull, and that is why they must be stopped. Sherlock said. Yeah, but so I just want to point out, I'm pretty sure Kitaro from Gegege no Kitaro would solve it. He's just like, uh, uh, no, man, I, I, I ain't dealing with this, man. Uh, you guys are on your own. I'm sorry. David was in thought. Oh, say the rift. Wave of fire nuclear bombs into it. Finally, someone has common sense. Yeah, sure, Yukari <laughs> and the others have powerful Don Maku spells and whatnot, but a bomb's a bomb. And that's and and, and, and am I right, Shiki? A bomb is yep. still a bomb. Let's see. And he said the path and he said the passcodes to the nuclear silo and the nukes fired into the rift, but the magic barrier blew them up, so they did not cause damage as Yukari watched. Foolish humans always resorting to war and killing. Proof they cannot coexist. She sighed. Okay, Yukari, you're the one that started this mess. Of course they're gonna fight back. <laughs> this is just getting stupid. You can liberate a human village. Zero was geared up as he armed his guns and took his sword and then put his black ru uh, ruinic trench, uh, trench vote on. She's gone too far. I have to go to her fortress and finish this before she takes over the Earth, my old homeworld. Zero sighed as he cuddled his wife Tenchi and then Tei kissed. Zero left as Tenchi sighed. Zero, come back. I'm pregnant. She, she sighed as he was already gone before he could hear her. Zero left to fight in the final battle, delivering now just Earth but his adopted homeworld against Sokyo. I know so much bad has happened. But I will never forget the good memories I made against Sokyo. I must fight to bring them those days back. Oh, uh, what, uh, what? And you had no memories of the outside world? Zero, you're a goddamn madman. But then a bright beam hit him as Marasia Kritsume was there. Ah, yes, Marisa, uh, Marasia Kritsume, my favorite Toho character. Not another step, Zero. Marasia said, and Zero was angry. What are you doing? Get out of my way. It, he demanded. You will ruin everything, and Sokia will stand for if I do not stop you. Yukai is right. Us humans, we're no better than animals in the end. I will not let war break out against Sokio. You mean, you mean like the war that's going on right now? Marizia said with sad. Well, we're going to have our humans or monsters message, no matter how inconsistent it is. Of course. <laughs> Marissa, you fucking bitch! You're a human yourself! Zero grasped. And that is why I know our dark nature, and must at least serve as a good example so the yokai go easier on us. Marissa said and fired another Master Sparkle at Zero oh, and he dodged oh, it. Oh, that is, yes, that is a good bit. The we master... lick your bit, you caught it. Ah, uh, uh, yes, the Master Sparkle. Oh, man, I missed that so much. Raymu then appeared and joined Marissa's side. Uh, what? They're just licking Yukari's bits here, like just like. Oh, you, you yes, let me lick look, your bits look, didn't didn't Zun say that Reimu was the most powerful character in all of Toho Project? Yeah. yeah so <laughs> I'm pretty sure that Re I mean, I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying it would be an easy battle, but I'm still. But yeah, you, but Reimu could still be Yukari. So why is she licking her boots? I don't know, they're just licking her bits, going, "Oh, I'm one of the good humans, Yukari. Please go easy on me." <laughs> Yukari has our interests at heart, Zero. Stop this foolish battle and accept the ings as they are. Reimu ordered. Zero was both angry and sad because yet more friends betray him, like all of if, three. If he won't betray me. Everyone betray me. I'm fed up with this world. After everything we've done, dot, 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 I will fight you if I have to. He shouted and powered up. All right, that is where we're going to end things off. There's only three more chapters after this, guys. Three more chapters. We are so close. It's so um, We're almost there. Let me tell you, guys. This is going to be like the craziest. I feel like it's not the craziest, but it's going to be an interesting three chapters next next time. So see you guys then.